Thailand Outlook. Welcome to Thailand Outlook, the News Digest program. I'm Kajang with Jochit, your host today. Today we have some uh, interesting stories to uh, share with you. We uh, have got a diplomatic powerhouse in our backyard. The Thai and Russian foreign ministers recently met in the beautiful paradise of Phuket to uh, tackle some crucial regional and global issues. Thailand is also on a roll in exploring new trade opportunities. Our nation is currently eyeing an FTA, um, that is a free trade agreement for the uninitiated with none other than the East African community. Also, our trade department is out there making moves. They have paid a friendly visit to Laos, promoting the utilization of uh, that FTA among our talented exporters. And uh, last but not least, we uh, care about your well-being too. Thailand has officially kicked off the Discover the New You campaign. Which is all about promoting health and wellness tourism. In um, our first story today, our foreign minister Don Bermadvinai recently met with uh, the Russian foreign minister Sergey Lavrov in uh, the uh, southern province of Phuket. Uh, they were there to discuss some serious stuff, you know, like issues that concern both um, our nations. The Thai foreign ministry said uh, Don and Lavrov had a real heart-to-heart on the current situation in the Asia-Pacific region, Ukraine, and um, also Myanmar. The two sides uh, took it to the next level by following up on the results of the eighth session of the Joint Thai-Russian Commission on uh, Bilateral Cooperation. And they talked about boosting our bilateral trade, especially for those. Uh, Thai fishery products. Uh, there's also more on the agenda. They want to um, amp up collaboration in science, technology, and innovation, or STI, along with getting super cozy with areas like culture, sports, and tourism. The pair is also supporting the idea of a free trade agreement or FTA between Thailand and the Eurasian Economic Union or EAEU. And just to top it off. Uh, Lavrov swung by Phuket to open the brand new Consulate General of Russia there. And this was Lavrov's first trip to Thailand after the whole COVID-19 situation. Last time he was here, it was for the ASEAN Foreign Ministers Meeting, or AMM, back in 2019 in Bangkok. to the show this is thailand outlook now uh, we've got some exciting news coming straight from the trade fronts thailand is feeling adventurous and is eyeing an epic opportunity an fta uh, that is a free trade agreement with none other than the east african community or eac our savvy trade negotiators recently had some serious discussions with none other than the kenyan ambassador to thailand the two sides discuss uh, trade ties between uh, Thailand and the amazing Seven Nation EAC bloc, which includes countries like Burundi, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Kenya, Rwanda, South Sudan, Tanzania, and uh, Uganda. And you know what's driving all this? Our Commerce Ministry has spotted the potential of the African market and is eager to make some powerful moves. The private sector is totally on board with this, sending requests to pursue FTAs uh, with African countries. They have even outlined some uh, big plans already. Uh, a joint trade committee meeting with Kenya is on the agenda for the first quarter of next year. Um, Kenya will be the gracious host and they're um, going to dive into all things trade and investments. We're talking about a major platform for some serious collaboration. Thailand is being an awesome host too. We have extended invitations to Kenyan business operators to take part in our fantastic Thai trade shows. Kenya is now looking to expand their exports to Thailand, and they want to see more Thai companies investing in their economy. This is just a win-win situation.
In an, our next headline today, our trade department sent their A team to Laos, making a pit stop at the Ta Na Lang Dry Ports. They are on a mission to spread the world about the awesome perks of free trade agreements or FTAs to our Thai entrepreneurs. Ta Na Lang Dry Port is a game changer. Laos is working its magic to enhance connections with its neighboring countries. Uh, they've got this ambitious plan to go from being landlocked to border connected, and this port is the key, making shipping logistics between Thailand, Laos, and uh, China a breeze. Now, Thai food exports are hitting it big time, all thanks to the China-Laos railway that opened up in 2021. Uh, Thai food exports to China skyrocketed from 90.41 million baht to a jaw-dropping 1.96 billion baht in just one year. And it didn't really stop there. In the first five months of 2023, uh, they raked in a stunning 2.85 billion baht. Uh, fresh durians making up as much as 72% of the total fruit exports. Our farmers and uh, fruit exporters are seizing this golden opportunity as well. They're using the ASEAN China Free Trade Agreement or ACFTA and the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership or RCEP like pros. So I'm um, all aboard the railway of success between these three countries. And in our final headline today, the Tourism Authority of Thailand or TAT has done it again. They have launched a super cool campaign called Discover the New You. And guess what? It's all about promoting health and wellness tourism in the most creative and exciting way possible. The agency is keeping up with the times, meeting the demands of modern day tourists, and pushing for diverse and sustainable tourism experiences. Now, TAT has teamed up with over 130 top notch health and wellness businesses. Uh, including hotels, resorts, spas, hospitals, and specialized clinics. Uh, together, they are kicking off the Amazing Thailand Health and Wellness New Chapters New Experience Program. Uh, TNT is not keeping this party to themselves. They have invited tour operators, bloggers, and also influencers to join in the fun. They want to spread the magic and attract health and wellness tourists from all corners of the globe. And uh, this campaign is going to be a real game changer for our nation's economy. Uh, TAT is expecting no less than uh, 3,000 travels all across Thailand, bringing in over 18 million baht in revenue. So uh, let's give it a round of applause to all the sectors involved for launching this fantastic campaign. And if you are itching to discover the new you, head over to worldwideweb.discoverthenewyou.travel to get all the juicy details and grab some incredible products and services. And that wraps up today's edition of Thailand Outlook. From uh, the Thai and uh, Russian foreign ministers meeting up in the stunning Phuket to uh, tackle global issues, to uh, Thailand setting the sights on an epic FTA with the East African community. We're talking about some serious international connections happening here. And let's not forget our trade department's power move. They visited Laos to promote FTA utilization among our talented exporters. It's all about boosting those trade ties. And hey, if you're looking for a rejuvenating adventure, we've got you covered. The Discover the New You campaign has launched to promote health and wellness tourism in the most amazing and creative way possible. Say hello to meaningful wellness travel. So whether it's diplomatic talks, trade ventures, or finding your inner zen, we've got it all covered on Thailand Outlook. Stay tuned for more awesome updates and exciting news in the future. Until next time, take care and keep embracing the new you. I'm Katan with Talk to you. Stay
foundational to Thailand's renown as a tourist destination is its wealth of cultural tourism offerings. Through state support, new experiences and increasingly valuable opportunities for travel continue to be added to the kingdom, providing reasons for travelers to visit the nation again and again. View traditional performances, choose products from local artisans, explore unique communities. Thailand's cultural tourism presents endless wonders. Towards ushering in a new chapter of Thailand with new opportunities and innovation, the Bio-Circular Green or BCG economy is being promoted by the nation's government. Serving as the new economic model for the future of Thailand, the approach brings with it balance, harmony and sustainability as well as progress and prosperity so Thailand may flourish today and into the future. On top of being more proactive in the winning of hearts and minds to foster peace and order in the southern border provinces of Batani, Naratiwad, and Yala, security mechanisms in the region have also resolved to prioritize the avoidance of violence as much as possible. Announcing revamps of approaches and tactics for 2023, the Fourth Army indicated it will be emphasizing softer methods and circumventing clashes. Weaponry and force are to be employed only for self-defense under this year's guidelines with violent elements to be dealt with through dialogue and calls for surrender rather than outright battles. The altered tactics are in light of the Army's prioritization of ensuring public safety. The force is determined to protect life and property as much as possible with the intent extending to those involved in the unrest. The response to violence will be assurances of a fair trial and assistance if the perpetrator submits to arrest and ends their action. Raids and searches will be used to uncover plots preemptively in further support of the non-violent measures and the Fourth Army is to exercise maximum patience in all of its operations. Local religious and community leaders have been informed of the policy so that they may also contribute to the effort. These leaders have been asked to communicate the Army's desire to avoid clashes to those who may have been misled into actions against society. They are to be reminded that they can give up their arms and be treated to fair trials, and that rehabilitation will be available. Extending from the approach will be a supplying of information and recommendations from the Fourth Army to peace negotiators. This effort is being made to showcase to all that the main avenue toward peace being taken by all official representatives in the South is dialogue. It is the belief of the Fourth Army that de-escalation and an avoidance of violence will uplift the atmosphere in the South and inspire further peace. The more non-violent approach is even to extend to operations against drug smugglers. But the Army has, at the same time, resolved to step up action against narcotics for the general improvement of the South. The theme for the 28th APEC Ministerial Meeting was Inclusive Recovery of APEC SMSEs. Through the Bio-Circular Green Economy, or the BCG Model, and High Impact Ecosystem. Ministerial representatives from 21 APEC economies attended the meeting, which focused on using the BCG Model, digital transformation, and financial policies to boost the capacity of micro, small, and medium enterprises SMSEs. As chair of the meeting, Deputy Prime Minister Supatana Pong Pan Mi Chao stated that SMSEs account for more than 98% of the region's businesses and contribute 
40 to 60 percent of GDP in most APEC economies. He added that promoting a more resilient, inclusive, and dynamic trade and investment environment that strengthens the role of APEC SMSEs in the global economy is critical to economic recovery and sustainability of the region. Participants at the meeting agreed to promote inclusive and high-impact recovery in four priority areas. 1. Adoption of the BCG model Promoting the BCG model to add value to SMSE products and services increase business opportunities and reinforce ongoing global efforts to address climate change. 2. Digital Transformation Digitalization accelerates SMSE's overall development, aids recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, and moves the region closer to the APEC Putrajaya Vision 2040, which aims for strong, balance, secure, sustainable, and inclusive growth. The goal is to provide SMSEs with digital skills and tools that will allow them to reach more markets and customers. While more consultation, digital skills training, and digital solutions will also be required for SMSEs. 3. Financing and Debt Restructuring for SMSEs APEC countries are encouraged to address traditional lending constraints by implementing a credit enhancement scheme, credit mediation, and alternative funding options such as venture capital, sustainable finance, angel investment, and private equity, as well as promoting financial literacy. The goal should be to increase and simplify access to capital market financing for SMSEs, particularly those owned or led by women. Number 4. Adapting to a changing market landscape The meeting embraced efforts to strengthen SMSEs' competitiveness by improving the business environment for startups, fostering innovation, encouraging participation in regional and global value chains, and collaborating with large enterprises. The Deputy Prime Minister stated that the meeting would result in greater cooperation among APEC countries to encourage SMSEs and startups to adopt the BCG model as well as new technology to compete in global supply chain and contribute to the sustainable recovery of regional economies. A devoted member of ASEAN, Thailand has given importance to the areas highlighted for development by the association, from education, sports, art and culture, and communication to labor, youths, women's rights, poverty, natural disasters, and public health. Through both its own programs to participation in regional endeavors, Thailand is driving progress in the 15 matters deemed crucial by the ASEAN community. On November 11, 2022, under the chairmanship of the Kingdom of Cambodia in Phnom Penh, Somdet Akamaha Senabadi De Hun Sen, the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Cambodia, presided over the 40th and 41st ASEAN summits. Under the theme, as in ACT, Addressing Challenges Together, Member States reaffirm ASEAN's solidarity and cohesion, consolidated centrality and ASEAN's active role in promoting peace and stability in the region. Building on the successes of previous chairmanships, Member States acknowledge ASEAN's consistent progress in economic integration and regional connectivity, as well as its improved capacity to adapt to shifting regional and global conditions. Additionally, they praise initiatives that actively promote ASEAN awareness, identity, and visibility. By acknowledging the rapidly evolving strategic complexity and the challenges that still need to be addressed 
as well as the emergence of non-traditional security issues, in order to protect the lives and well-being of our people. As in reaffirm its strong commitment to further strengthen collective efforts in enhancing the region's resilience to navigate and effectively respond to emerging challenges. As in also affirm its commitment to sustaining inclusive growth in the direction of a resilient future with a holistic and strategic approach to better protect our people against future spillover effects and challenges. Consequently, the primary outcomes for ASEAN 2022 are by endorsing the ASEAN leaders' vision statement on ASEAN ACT, addressing challenges together, which emphasizes the spirit of togetherness as one community and the shared intent in our collective effort to address and resolve problems that are plaguing our region. Additionally, it seeks to motivate ASEAN members to uphold the spirit of cooperative effort, affirm our shared interests, and work together to address pressing issues in the spirit of ASEAN's founding principles. In establishing the ASEAN community, particularly in the COVID-19 pandemic recovery efforts and other megatrends, and in laying the foundation for regional peace and security, leaders acknowledge the crucial role that young people played. Moreover, in order to give marginalized groups and remote communities equal access to services, infrastructure, and opportunities for skill development, member states agreed to the first ASEAN Youth Dialogues recommendation to strengthen regional cooperation. Most importantly, ASEAN reiterated our dedication to fostering women's entrepreneurship and enhancing women's economic empowerment in the recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic and the development of long-term resilience. In light of this, the nations decided to adopt the Declaration on Building a More Sustainable, Inclusive and Resilient Future, Unlocking Women's Entrepreneurship in ASEAN. Stop COVID-19 While wearing masks is recommended in the effort to stop the spread of COVID-19, Proper mask wearing is also important. Wash your hands thoroughly before putting on a mask. Make sure it covers your mouth and nose entirely with no gaps. Do not touch the mask while wearing it and wash your hands if you do. Take off your mask by only touching the straps and never the front of the mask. Discard of single-use masks or damp masks immediately and mark the bag or bin to protect others. You can help stop the spread of COVID-19. Thailand is leading the fight against corruption with the setting up of the Corruption Deterrent Center, or CDC, an agency created with the mission to promote transparency and combat corruption in the country. The CDC is at the forefront of the battle against corruption, joining forces with other government agencies to create a culture of integrity. Join the movement to create a more transparent and corruption-free society in Thailand. Support the efforts of the Corruption Deterrent Center and be a part of building a brighter future for our country. In 2016, Thailand 4.0, a proposed economic model, was launched. It emphasized innovation and high-level services aided by advanced digital technology. With a training hub aimed at empowering Thailand's internet startups and boosting the country's technology ecosystem to transform Thailand's digital economy. This economic model seeks to implement an innovative, value-based industrial model that integrates social and environment well-being inside its vision for prosperity. The established industries are automotive, intelligent electronics, 
agriculture and biotechnology, food processing, and higher wealth and medical tourism. The additional five industries that are intended to be the alternative force for the future of Thai economy are digital software, robotics, aviation and logistics, comprehensive healthcare and biofuel, and biochemical industries. Since Thailand's digital revolution, the country experienced a shift towards a cashless society. In a bid to stay competitive in the financial technology or fintech sector, Thai banks began to quickly invest in digitalization. In 2020, many banks announced that they would be allocating funds to digital infrastructure developments, core banking systems, creating, acquiring, and developing its technology infrastructure. As a result, mobile and internet banking transactions increased by 83% in 2016. The Bank of Thailand reported a surge in mobile and internet banking usage, with mobile and internet banking accounting for 33% of total payment transaction volume, up from 8% in 2008. Such competitive e-wallet services as well as the adoption of internet banking models have changed the way Thai consumers pay for goods and services. Companies like shopping platforms entered this phase of cashless payments in Thailand, promoting a wallet service to the country's large user base. In addition, in 2019, ride-hailing companies partnered with financial institutions to launch mobile wallet payments and other financial services in Thailand. Moreover, smart cities have also become a focal point for Thailand's new economic model. The national goal is to transform 100 cities into smart cities by 2022. However, in 2019, 20 cities from 9 provinces have already applied for the government's smart city projects. The proposals would need to outline a clear investment infrastructure and development plan, introduce smart city solutions, and also provide a model of sustainability. Chonburi was one of the government's pilot smart city projects. The industrial city, which is also the home province of Pattaya, is in the midst of transforming with state-of-the-art technology, renewable energy, energy-efficient infrastructure, and sustainable environment management. This is HSK9, Radio Thailand's World Service, broadcasting from the Public Relations Department in Bangkok. This is HSK9, Radio Thailand's World Service, broadcasting from the Public Relations Department in Bangkok. This is HSK9, Radio Thailand's World Service, broadcasting from the Public Relations Department in Bangkok. <laughs> 